Public service announcement. Stop wearing the same t-shirt and hoodies you've been wearing for the last 10 years. It is time to update your wardrobe with the brand new Crown Racing Co. 2024 merch line. We have brand new embroidered large crown logos on heavyweight t-shirts. Also in gold, we have small crown logos embroidered on heavyweight t-shirts. If you live in the north, don't worry, we got you covered. We also have hoodies with the original crown logo, embroidered. We also have hoodies with the new crown logo, embroidered, very warm. Stop wearing the same clothes you've been wearing for the last 10 years. Your friends, your family, and your girlfriend wanna see you in something new. So go to crownracingco.com and cop yourself something from our brand new 2024 merch line. Thank you. What's going on internet? Welcome back to another Crown Racing Co. video. Today, we're gonna be reinforcing my rear shock towers, and I'll tell you why. So traditionally, if you follow me over here, the New Edge Mustang, the rear spring goes on the lower control arm. That's a part of the four link suspension for the rear axle. And the spring pressure is held by this top spring mount here. But on my car, I converted to a true coilover. Yeah, I converted to a true coilover in the rear. So originally just your shock would mount right here on the axle. Just the strut, yeah. Now my whole coilover mounts on the axle like this. So we need to reinforce that top strut tower where it connects to in the car because it was never designed to actually hold spring pressure. Yeah. So how are you gonna reinforce it? What's the plan for today? I'm gonna start off with tying my shoe and then I'll tell you. Okay. Dude, really impressive stuff there. So we're gonna start off with just stitch welding what's there. Show us, take because, us down there. So I'm gonna stitch weld inside of these two ears that hold the, the rear strut tower to the frame rail. And now I'm gonna stitch weld right here, which would be connecting the wheel well sheet metal to the strut tower. And that's what I'll do for the outside. And then on the inside, as you guys can see, the wheel well is separate from the strut tower. So I'm gonna stitch weld all around the top there. And then this heavy duty little piece of metal on the very top is just spot welded right here. So we'll stitch weld around the both left and right sides of that. And then I'll just stitch weld a little bit here at the bottom. And then I'll do a couple stitches to connect the trunk floor pan to this. Okay, and then you also have a strut bar too. So, yeah, so are you gonna weld the strut bar in, make it permanent? Yeah, so originally, this would be a bolt-on rear like strut bar. Yeah. So we're gonna weld this in and I'll tie the gussets into this as well. So both sides will be tied together. So it's gonna be a lot of work, but that's what we're doing today. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the brackets that I made that's gonna help reinforce the top. I do have a patent pending on these, so don't be running away with my idea, okay? Bam. Bench <laughs> sheet metal. Bench sheet metal. Bench. <laughs> Excellent. So, yeah, so we just put a hole in the top for the coilover, and then I'm gonna end up welding, so it sit like this, right? On the, on the strut tower, weld here. Weld here and then weld on the, basically just weld the two sides of it and that should be plenty yeah. strong. And then I'm also, of course I have a two bar. Left over from my cage actually. Yeah, I actually, I have two different bars I can use because I used to have a strut tower bar back there, but it was just bolted on when you put the coil over on. So I got two options, but we'll put a bar in between and weld that in too so it's permanent. And then that should be substantially stronger than it was Absolutely. before.
Exposed. Marcus Lindsay exposed. Drinks out of dog bowl. Exposed. How'd you guess? Is it because I'm standing in front of a bowl that I'm putting water in? No. It's for my fur baby. Right there. So also, while we're in the middle of reinforcing the strut towers, I made some modifications to my rear axle. Uh, some pretty exciting things here. These are the stock axles, but I upgraded to some hardened axles. They're still 28 spline because I really didn't feel like upgrading to the 31 spline doing the diff and everything was necessary because this is a drift car and the biggest tire that, get, that goes on this car is like a 255. So I ended up doing 28 spline, but I got heat treated hard of that, hardened axles and then Later on, I'll pop the cover off and I'll show you the inside here, but I switched from a 410 rear gear to a 355 rear gear. And that is because- Not a huge difference, more, but- I needed more wheel speed for drifting because wheel speed equals tire smoke. And so the 355 comes, I kind of like the way Steve C5 is geared. Yeah. So I basically set my car up to get close to matching a C5 Corvette gearing. So my first and second gear will be way longer now. Yeah, you were almost in, be in between second and third at a lot of the tracks that yeah. we were at. So hopefully this will utilize second much more. It'll hopefully be much I taller. I can just use second the, throughout the whole track like you were able to do. Yeah. Because I was always switching between and sometimes I would do a turn and I couldn't do anything but just sit so, on red line. Small upgrade, but actually big driver upgrade. It could uh, really change how the car drives on track. Yeah. So while Marcus has been busy working on the Mustang, I've been working on a small project myself. So when we installed the roll cage, the original rear view mirror hits the cage and it is essentially unusable now. And since I still drive this on the street and I still like to know what I could potentially hit or not hit when I'm backing up, I wanted to install a rear view mirror. So as you guys can see through the glass, I've actually installed a small Gentex camera and this small camera comes with the GNTX-R race mirror that Gentex sells. So as I open this up, you can see that we got the camera mounted, mounted to the glass there. And then don't worry, I have a case to cover it so it'll look good as the final product. And Marcus, if you dip down, you can actually see the mirror. Um, it's illuminated. So instead of it being a mirror, it's actually a screen and it's giving live feed uh, video of this camera here at the end of the Corvette. And the thing that makes these really expensive is that they're high quality and the refresh rate is really fast. So things that are happening through the camera update on the mirror almost instantaneously. So Mark, go look at the car and you can see me back here behind the car. How cool is that, dude? That is like the coolest thing ever. So I'm like this far above the bumper, and the farther out you go, the wider it gets, right? So this is a really cool upgrade. It's We're not making more power, it's not a camshaft, but it's a really cool upgrade for a race car because I'm bringing more streetability into a full-blown caged race car. I can tell you right now, the camera doesn't do justice to how cool this rear view mirror looks inside of the car. So this was a cool side project. It was fun to work on. If you think that's really cool, like the video, leave a comment down below. So it's a new day. I just got, I'm just starting to feel better. I was actually sick last week, but I have an update for you guys. As you can see, the axle is back in the car. So we left off with, I was putting the pin into the diff um, and putting the C-clips in that retain the axles inside of the rear axle. And um, I re-shimmed the diff and stacked the clutches up again so it's nice and tight. So I have like a basically welded diff again until the clutches wear out. And because of that, I had a hard time getting the, the diff pin to go down. So I 
grinded those C-clips down just a little bit and now the pin was able to go in and out. So I was able to finally finish assembling the rear axle and then obviously I put it back in the car, which is the best part because now that means I'm completely done with reinforcing the rear strut towers and I'm really happy with the way it came out. Let's go check it out and look at the final product. So you guys saw me weld all this previously. The only thing that's different now is I also sealed all of this whole area, all the welds, anywhere where water could get in. I sealed with automotive grade sealant. The war on rust never ends, huh? And if you noticed when in the past couple of minutes, I pour 15 the rear axle to hopefully slow down that rust. Mm -hmm. That was my first time using pour 15. Oh my gosh. I'm an absolute believer of pour 15. I would use pour 15 if you need to cover a rusty piece of metal. Yeah, it stood up well. So got everything sealed on the outside and on the inside and I pour 15 um, the bar as well because I realized how strong it was. So I was like, we're gonna pour 15 everything. Everything, yeah, might as well paint the outside of the car Let's next. Check out the final product. <laughs> ah, God, I just hit my head on the trunk. So here you go guys, here are the final results. So just like Mark said, he painted everything and it looks so good. So when are you gonna hook up the subs, man? We need a, a 12 back here thumping. Well, that's my fuel pump. The subs are over there. <laughs> but, so as you guys probably know, this was my first car. So I had this car in high school, and of course I was that guy. And I had a Alpine Type R 12 inch, one sub, and it bumped. But I grew up. The so good old days. I grew up. So it's not in the car anymore. Oh, so don't do the people dirty that have no, subs, subs still. subs are great. I love subs, just, um, Marcus I likes to put money in his engine now. Yeah, I like to put money in my engine now. So the Steve's laughing at me because the cables for the subs are still there. I told him to get rid of them, but he won't. You did a great job, Mark. The welds came out great. It looks a little ugly now because it's seam sealed. Well, there'll be carpet. But... There'll be carpet. So we got the bar across. Obviously, I just went crazy with the Pour 15 because I plan on putting carpet back in here. So it'll it'll cover the bottom. You won't see the the transition from pour 15 to whatever the stock paint is. Right. What's that? My old cylinder heads. They're, List, they're listed like for heads. sale, huh? Yeah, listed them for sale. We're gonna make some money. Would you just look at it? What's that? This is what you can expect in our next video. So the motor is still blown up. The piston still has a hole in it, as you can see. Um, however, I bought... Dang, brother, what are those? Yes, sir, you better believe it. I've wanted these cylinder heads for years, and I finally pulled the trigger and spent the money. These are 185 AFR aluminum cylinder heads. Good Lord. And I got the full CNC ported option. So here is the exhaust port. And here is the intake port. I've never seen a CNC ported head like this before. I only work with cast stuff because I'm poor. This is really nice. Wow. Dude, these are gonna make some jam, huh? Dude, I honestly, I didn't even wanna install them. I just wanted to leave them in the kitchen and look at them, they're so beautiful. Yeah. But obviously we're gonna use them. So I'm super excited about that. All right, that's gonna be it for this video. Thank you guys for sticking around to the end. You know the deal. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you guys are interested in buying some Crown Racing Co. merch, you can buy it at crownracingco.com. Thank you guys for everything, and we'll see you in the next video. Let me guess, it's show and tell time? Show and tell time. We got, I know this video was based on the Mustang, but I wanted to update you guys on what I've been working on while Mark has been working on the rear end and the strut towers. We painted the brakes. Ooh, changing man. colors. And I also did brand new soft lines. So my soft lines were getting worn out. So we painted all the brakes. Here we go, we got the two pistons in the front. Ooh, spicy. And then of course, brand new soft line. So we redid the brakes. We're looking good there, but it's funny because that's not even my favorite upgrade. My favorite upgrade was a freaking shift boot. Look how good this looks. The interior's coming together. So I got a leather boot with yellow stitching, 
for the shifter and for the handbrake. So it matches the wheel and it matches the harnesses now. And we also have a very fancy GT3 racing. Yeah, they saw that earlier in this video. Gotcha. So uh, there you go. Quick little short update for you guys on the, on the Corvette. Well, you know what they say, right? Um, black and yellow, progress, black and progress. yellow. Oh, black and yellow, black and yellow. What's that Wiz Khalifa song? That, yeah, that's what we're doing. We're changing the color of the Corvette this year too, so stay tuned for that in future videos.